This is going to be a video tutorial about how to use your Wi-Fi antenna in a program called NetStumbler to detect when police cars are around. Um, I've only tested this out on one law enforcement agency and that's sheriffs for Brevard County. And I found this by accident actually. Let me maximize this so you guys can see better. When I was aligning my antenna to get better reception, I noticed that a police car drove by and anybody to use NetStumbler before, there's a very loud audible alarm. Well, I had my speakers cranked up pretty good so I could hear it from the outside. And I noticed every time a sheriff car drove by, I would get this signal right here, uh, SSTPR1. And I thought, okay, well, that's cool. Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe the guy had uh, a phone with 3G capability or something. He was on the internet. But it keeps on happening every time they drive by, and I can tell every time a sheriff drove by my house by the SSPR1. And NetStumbler is pretty cool. It has different channels, so you can maximize channel 1, see what uh, MAC addresses. That's what these numbers, these are your MAC addresses. The SSID is the name that has been assigned by the person, or it comes automatically assigned to a network. Um, you know, default house of K in 1979, and uh, you can on this SSID. This will show you the names of the network, the SSID, and filters. You can also use filters to click on this one to show ones that have the encryption off only, or the ones that will appear here. And this little round dots. I'll put it on encryption on, and it'll show the encryption on. But these little dots here. Let me. You can click on channels, and it shows everything. Uh, these little dots here, where you see the the green going on and off, that shows what signals are active, what signals you're actually receiving. So, and it also shows the channels here, channel nine, six, the megabytes per second which it's operating on, uh, the the vendor, uh, the type of what it is, if it's an access point for AP. Uh, here, I believe, is something different, which is what the sheriff's is on can see here, it's on here, and the encryption, if it's WEMP, or, uh, you know, it's kind of weird because the WPA actually shows up for WEP for the encryption, but let me lock on to uh, the one I'm going on here. If you click on the channels, then you actually click on the MAC address, you'll start to get a graph of the signal ratio. Uh, when it's a low signal, it'll, the 50, negative 50 is going to be the highest and the lowest is negative 100. So really you only have a signal, of, I know it shows going up to the negative 7, but you really only have a signal of 28% uh, signal strength on this. But that's good enough, anywhere between a uh, 80 to a 70%, somewhere in the middle there, is strong enough to lock onto the signal, but that's not what we're using this for. What this video is about is how to detect police cars. Well police cars have laptops inside of them and those laptops are connected to a certain network that's connected to the NCIC database. NCIC database is for the National Crime Information Center. So they can run, uh, say they have a suspect with a gun, they can run the gun number, the numbers on the gun to see if it's a stolen weapon, uh, to see his priors, to see if he has any outstanding warrants, anything like that. And what I'm proposing is association with this net slumbler is I'm going to write a script for people that are in certain states where radar detectors and laser detectors are illegal because in no way shape or form is this detecting radar or lasers this is con detecting the uh, the NCIC link that they have that they're receiving in their police car and that's why it shows up the SS uh, TPR1 that's how I can get them, and also you can tell the PER, the type of uh, signal that you're getting. I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm not an expert at this, but I'm slowly but surely beginning to grasp it a little bit more. Uh, what I'm proposing is we write a script so that anytime you type in the SSID of what alarms you want to be different from the standard net stumbler, and it'll actually tell you the direction. And how I plan on doing this is having four different antennas, one on the grill, one on the license plate, one on the left side and the right side of the car. And what they're all they're all going to be synchronized together. Uh, you go to your devices, you'll synchronize them. And what it's going to do is it's going to measure the strength. So the car, the tenant in front of the car, if it has a really high strength and the ones on the left and right have a low, then 
the front antenna will have an arrow indicating pointing forward. Uh, there are some radar detectors that use this method. I've heard it referred to on the Valentine one as a double bogey uh, system to be able to tell you uh, it has a number display and then also has an arrow from forward or backward to tell if the cops are in front of you or behind you. I may just simplify the method and just use two antennas instead of four, but uh, I thought it'd be fun to have four. In either case, what it's going to do is tell you how far away they are also by the signal strength. Uh, I'm going to have to work on work on that a little bit more, but it should be very interesting, uh, and this should work. I mean, it's all sound in theory. Uh, the only difficult part is programming and writing the uh, program to do it. And this is going to be very useful to people in those states. And the range on this is really going to be determined by how many milliamps uh, are powered by this. Uh, there's been some. I have one grid antenna that has a uh, 24 dBi gain, which means it's very powerful. The higher the number before the initials dBi on antenna is better. Uh, most standard ones are between 7 to 10 dBi. Uh, you can buy a ch different uh, G, G+, Plus, and N antennas at uh, Walmart if you'd like. I'm using a Belkin N class N antenna. The way it works is G is about 100 feet to within inside a house. Uh, G+, Plus is about maximum of 200 feet in class N I have a known connection between three to five hundred feet uh, getting a solid connection and that's line of sight that's not behind a whole bunch of trees or the way basically the way it works for Wi-Fi is if you can see on someone's window you can make it a connection and if the routers within that room you can make a connection um, but in this case we're going to be using on the road which is a lot more visible the road isn't behind trees or brushes so you'll have a lot more range with a good quality strength antenna so this ought to be very interesting when I'm done with this and I'm gonna put it out there free of charge for anybody uh, if you'd like to help me write the program uh, send me a personal email on YouTube and uh, we should work together to get this done and another thing is people are like well you know that's good and all you only know one law enforcement agency but the way I'm gonna have this is you're gonna type in the SSID you wanna give an audible alarm to but how you'll get the SSID is you have your laptop on, you have it on that stumbler, and then you go on to Google Maps and you find, type in police, sheriff, and state trooper. And you'll find all the home offices there. That's where they have all their patrol cars. And what you're going to do is you're going to drive to that parking lot with your net stumbler on and see what SSIDs pop up. And if they're all the same or some are different, you mark these down, you make it into a small text file, and then you will know what SSIDs are related to what department and you also know that these are police SSIDs so that's how we will figure that out um, I have a feeling that we'll have a lot of help with people war driving uh, so maybe I can make a uh, small website where we can collect large numbers of data a database where we have different law enforcement, law enforcement SSIDs all over the country uh, this will conclude the video uh, please rate and subscribe and hope you guys like it